Salutations everyone, my name is Alan Adra and thanks to the wonders of modern technology I can escape from this harsh disappointing place we call reality and immerse myself in a totally virtual reality gaming environment. Virtual reality gaming has had an interesting adventure when coming into fruition. For example, the Virtual Boy. Remember that? Because Nintendo really do not want you to. Nintendo released this behemoth of red and black plastic in 1996, and it was supposed to be the company's, and the general consumer's, first foray into VR gaming. It failed miserably. However, they weren't the only company to attempt virtual reality in the 90s. In 1991, Sega announced the Sega VR headset for the Mega Drive, taking advantage of LCD screens in the visor, cutting edge stereo headphone technology, and inertial sensors in the headset to track the user's head movements as accurately as possible. Yeah, guess how that turned out? Sega ultimately terminated the project sometime during 1993 and 1994, with the company stating that the virtual reality effect was too realistic, so users might move while wearing the headset and therefore injure themselves. But well, what in the hell was Sega putting into this headset? Nowadays, virtual reality has become so much more advanced and accessible. Accessible. And these things are such a blast to play, as long as you don't make yourself motion sick with them. These machines are amazing, and depending on the game, it can totally immerse you in its world. But how does it all work? That's what we're here to answer today. So sit back and relax, unless you feel like standing for some reason, and join me on this amazing escapade to find out how does VR work? At its core, VR technology only has one purpose, to simulate settings and environments realistically enough to fool the human brain into accepting them as reality. The brain needs to be as immersed as possible within the virtual environment, otherwise you're just going to end up being motion sick. This is the biggest problem VR headset developers come across. To be able to replicate the real world and do it flawlessly is no easy task. So how do they do it? First of all, the most important thing to get right is the field of view. This is arguably one of the most important things to get right in order to make an immersive environment, otherwise you might as well just be making out with a computer monitor. VR headsets either use two feeds sent to one display, or two LCD displays, one per eye. Most VR developers will go for the two display setup, unless you're, you know, a filthy Google Cardboard user. Most of your headsets such as my HTC Vive will allow you to perfectly position the distance between your eyes to make sure that the feed isn't blurry. These screens mimic two different video feeds to each eye, angling the camera to try and mimic how each eye views the world ever so slightly differently. Since a VR headset takes up your entire vision, it's important to get the 3D aspect working as flawlessly as possible, so then you can actually see in the game. The headset mimics the natural difference in perspectives for each eye to build an immersive 3D space around you, in addition to being more accurate to reality in general. If you look at raw VR footage, you'll notice that the picture isn't in a standard shape like you'd expect it to be, like a rectangle or a square, but it's actually more shaped like a circle. This is actually to mimic the eye as well, you know, since your vision isn't 16 by 9. The human eyes can see the world around them in a roughly 200 to 220 degree arc around their heads. VR headsets can't do that. Instead, most of your headsets operate in a roundabout 114 degree arc. While humans have the full 220 degree view arc, we can only see space in a view arc of 114 degrees. So why spend all that extra manpower and production costs on filling out the entire 220 degree FOV when we can mainly focus on the 3D part? Also, what would be the point? The player isn't going to notice everything that happens to them in the virtual environment, especially things that's next to the corner of your eye. So, VR companies just don't bother. However, what's the point in having a massive field of view if your frame rate is slower than my ability to talk about trending topics? Getting a high frame rate for VR is pretty much essential to having a great VR experience. Most people find it already aggravating when their games lag and their video becomes choppy. So imagine that happening, but it filled your entire vision. You would feel absolutely vile. Feeling motion sick would be an understatement as you stutter all over the place. Obviously this doesn't actually happen in real life. So to have it happen in your entire field of view would definitely screw up your brain. So how many frames per second would be required to have a smooth and immersive VR experience? Well, first of all, let's look at the human eye. 
Human eyes can see up to equivalent of 1000 frames per second. However, our brains can only pick up 150 frames per second. Beyond that, the information is lost in translation on the way to the brain. Now, all we need to know is what frame rate we're good enough to simulate reality without making you feel... Oh! 60 FPS is the bare minimum when it comes to VR gaming, since most developers have found that anything less than 60 FPS tends to cause disorientation, headaches, and nausea in the user. For that reason, most developers aim for a VR content sweet spot of around 90 frames per second, and some, like Sony, won't certify software to run on their devices if their software falls below 60 FPS at any point while in use. All to make sure that the experience is as smooth as possible and doesn't cause any motion sickness. Well, no wonder these things cost an arm and a leg. Now, while having a funky, snazzy VR headset's all cool and all, that's only part of the experience. It's not 2014 anymore. We can actually get up and walk around our virtual environments. Well, unless you're a mobile phone VR user, in which case... <laughs> Next up on the explanation block, Movement tracking. To make a VR play session more immersive, you don't want to be limited by your headset and be free to explore and move as freely as possible, as long as you don't crash into anything. In terms of how the headset can track these movements, there are a bunch of stuff VR headset manufacturers can use to calculate your head movements. For example, the HTC Vive uses the Lighthouse system. The Vive comes with these base stations that contain infrared LEDs, as well as a laser array which scans your environment by sweeping in horizontal and vertical motions in order to track the headset and controller whereabouts in your space. The headset and controllers have these built-in sensors which can detect the sweeps and therefore use the timings in between sweeps to accurately determine your position in 3D space. The Valve Index also uses this lighthouse system, whereas the PSVR only uses one camera to track your movements, however it's still pretty similar to how the other system works. If you're using a wireless headset such as the Vive Cosmos or the Oculus Quest, instead of using any external elements, the headsets use built-in cameras to use in a process called SLAP or simultaneous localization and mapping for people who like everything to be long-winded. These cameras generate a real-time 3D rendition of your environment. Machine learning algorithms then use that data to determine where the headset is positioned within the 3D generated map. Now we've got that nerd talk out of the way, why don't we go and try VR for ourselves? Huh, this isn't the game I loaded up. Damn, this place is amazing. Oh, God damn it, you're here as well. Salutations. Oh, my stars. I surely hope my abduction methods haven't hurt you. Oh, oh, oh don't worry. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, what about you, Alan? Your lens flares burned my eyes out. Now, where are my manners? Salutations, everyone. My name is Aurora Aldroid. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, of course. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Are you having a stroke? Shut up! Are you sure, my dear? You seem to be stuttering a lot. Me? No, 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 no. I'm f- Oh, now I hear it now. Blah, blah, blah. Someone's a little bit flustered. Oh, who cares? Hey! Could you please tell me why we're here? I've got better things to do, like talk about VR. Why, certainly, my red-hooded folk. My name is Aurora Aldroid, the guardian of the dream realm. I am aware that you've met my... opposite. Yeah. yeah. I'm here to alert you of the dangers I fear are coming. Nightmare Droid, while defeated, lies in hiding, waiting for his time to strike. Soon he shall rise again and seek revenge for what the two of you did to him, and I fear, with his newfound rage, He'll seek to destroy the planet you call Earth in the process. I do not know of his plan, but I'm 100% certain that it will have devastating effects on the multiverse if we do not stop him. That's why I called you here, to help me defeat him once and for all. Yep, I don't care. What? Did you not hear what she said? I did, and I don't care. How do I know this isn't a trap? After all, why the heck were you transported to the Nightmare Realm first? If I remember correctly, it was supposed to be my nightmare. So why were you there? Well, duh, that's pretty simple. Salutations, everyone. My name is Alexa Aldroid, and by looking at this can of cream soda right here, I could safely deduce that I seem to be locked in some kind of nightmare world with no means of escape. Hello? Who are you? I am the one who brought you to 
to your own personal nightmare. Oh, no, you're not now, then. No, I'm a woman. Abducted the wrong person into your nightmare realm. Yep. Really? It, it was that simple? I guess. Not everything needs to be a complex interwoven story. Can we please get back to the topic at hand? Yes, we can. What was it again? Nightmare droid? Oh yeah, not my problem. Just because you trapped me in a nightmare realm where I fought for my life playing video games to unlock the power of lucid dreaming, do you really think I would go back and help defeat him once and for all? Yes. No can do. Get Femdroid here to help you. Can I just be sent back? I've got VR to talk about. I didn't abduct you. This is VR. Huh. Boy, these games sure are immersive. Why do I have to help? You're the Guardian, you said. And you seem to be putting in a pretty bad job if you couldn't help us the first time. Helen! What? I, I'm afraid I wasn't able to interfere. Nightmare Droid is known to keep himself hidden until the time is right. By the time I had located him, you had already defeated him. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now is your time to shine! I'm off to do anything but this. Alan, out. <sighs> hey, it's okay, I'll stay. Thank you. I fear we need all the help we can get. Well, you're lucky I stayed. <laughs> I'm sure Alan will come around, and if not, I'll beat him until he does. Besides, I'm worth two of him at least. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. By the way, I didn't catch your name. He called you Femdroid? Call me Alexa. Alexa Aldroid. That's a beautiful name. Glad to have you with me, Alexa. Um, when you say you beat him, you didn't mean physical, right? No, just in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. He can't play that game. Right. Enough lore. Back to nerd talk. Virtual reality has come a long way from the 90s. It's amazing to know that immersive experiences like these are being continuously worked on, always improving and getting better and getting more immersive over time. We have now gotten to a point where we can play these big VR games on a wireless self-contained headset, no need for a computer. As technology improves and progresses over time, I am certain that virtual reality will do too. It appears that the target is trying to assemble a team to find me, unsuccessfully. Alan Aldroid seems to be out of the picture. The only people we need to worry about is that happy-go-lucky twelve and that naive brat. No matter, they shouldn't be too much trouble. I'll take care of them, then we can both get our hearts desires. Which reminds me about our arrangement. I say we change this little deal of ours. <laughs> <laughs>